You may think you need a new bike, but you can get a whole lot more out of your existing steed with some choice upgrades. Brakes feeling a little feeble, shifting a little clunky, wheels more taco than wagon wheel. You can remedy all of these with some simple component changes without spending a fortune. Even if you have a bike that isn't on its last legs, everyone loves an upgrade. Some choice changes on a newer bike can still improve performance while putting an even bigger smile on your face. To give you a helping hand, check out the top 5 upgrades you should make to your bike that are easy to do. Best of all, most won't cost you a pretty penny. As a little tease, we'll save what we think is the best upgrade you can make until later, so be sure to stay around until the end of the video to find out. High performing brakes might slow you down quicker, but they are also key to making you faster. After all, slower is smoother, and smoother can be faster. It's not just about going faster though. Improving your braking power and control is a great way to boost your confidence on the bike. Thankfully, the days of rim brakes are behind us, but that doesn't mean that all disc brakes are perfect at doing their job. Before you start looking at a brand new set, simply changing to a larger rotor or swapping brake pads will boost your stopping power out on the trail. Let's start by talking about rotors, and going up to a bigger rotor will increase your braking power by providing more leverage on the wheel. This is why you will see downhill and enduro bikes fitted with large 200, 220mm or even bigger rotors. The larger surface area of the bigger rotor also means they dissipate heat better, so they are less likely to overheat on long brake dragging descents. This will help give you a consistent feel at the lever when bombing downhill. Whacking on a set of 223mm rotors isn't always going to help though. They'll be heavier and more liable to bending from trailside impacts. While they will increase power, they will also lead to a slight loss of modulation. This can make it more difficult to control that power and prevent the wheel from locking up. Also, if the rotors are not getting hot enough, they may not get the pads suitably hot to work optimally, so you need to find that balance for your riding. A lot of bikes come fitted with organic or resin brake pads as standard. These are cheaper to produce, but aren't the most powerful or durable. Changing to a sintered metal pad can unlock better longevity and performance. If you don't want to shell out on a new set of pads, a quick freshen up of your current pads with a disc brake cleaner can help, but be sure to clean them thoroughly to avoid contamination. If all that isn't enough, quite often you can just upgrade the brake caliper rather than the whole braking system. Hope, Shimano and some other brands offer four piston calipers that can be fitted to the same brake levers as the two piston option. So this can also be a great way to boost your braking power without splashing out a whole heap of cash. You may still need to factor in the cost of fitting though. You'll need to bleed the brakes when making this upgrade, so consider that you may need a bike shop to do this for you. Feeling comfortable on the bike is a must when you're committing to big moves on the trail. Changing up your cockpit is an easy way to boost your confidence, control and comfort. Thankfully, most bikes these days come with wider handlebars and short stems. Even so, if you're prepared to get the Allen keys out, switching things around can put you in a better position to attack the trail. Upgrading to a high-rise handlebar will push your weight further back. This can help you feel more confident on descents without detracting too much from the bike's climbing ability. If you don't want to change the bar straight away and have any spaces above your stem, you can try this by shifting the stem higher on your steerer tube and popping the spaces underneath rather than above. This will shorten your seated position, so it may not be a permanent solution. If you like the height of the bar, but not the shorter reach, go for a higher rise bar and drop the stem back down. Don't just go slapping on the highest rise bars you can find though. Ask around your riding buddies or local bike shop to try a few different rises before committing to the best for you and your riding. This will also give you a chance to try a wider bar if required as well. We've all been there, waiting patiently for that sweet new upgrade to come, only to find it doesn't really suit your riding or your bike. If you're prepared to experiment with your cockpit, you'll be more likely to find what works for you. Just be careful not to change too many things at once, as it will make it harder to tell what is making the difference. If you're happy with your bar height and width, a shorter stem is another way to boost control and make the steering more reactive to your inputs. Again, there is a limit to how short you can go. Going too short can be detrimental to your comfort on the bike by putting you in too upright a position. You may even end up smacking your knees on your shifters, which is never nice. Last but by no means least, and this one does involve spending a bit of money, Think about equipping your bike with a dropper post if it doesn't have one, or upgrading to a longer one if it already does. This will let you move around the bike easier and allow you better control in technical terrain. It's not a cheap upgrade, but it can be transformative to your riding. 
the best thing to do is maximize the drop you can physically fit in your bike for your saddle height. Measure the distance from the seat clamp to your saddle rails and then the amount of insertion depth you have in your frame. From here, you'll be able to work out how much drop you can fit in your bike setup. One-up components have an excellent guide to help with this, so definitely check that out, along with our best dropper post buyer's guide with the link in the description if you're on the hunt for a new dropper. Suspension has arguably been one of the biggest innovations in mountain bike history, and it pays to make the most of it. Top-notch suspension will improve your grip, comfort, and control on the trail. However, as one of the more technical parts of your bike, upgrading can be expensive. If you've watched this far, then you won't be surprised to hear you don't have to spend a fortune though to get the best out of your suspension. Then again, if you want to watch my video on the best Enduro forks as tested by our expert team, then click the link above. Making sure your fork and or shock are freshly serviced is a relatively cheap and easy way to boost your suspension performance. Even out of the box, some forks and shots can come with less than ideal levels of oil in the lowers, so giving them a quick lower leg or air can service can be a quick way to get them feeling even better. Servicing is even more important if you ride a lot or haven't had your suspension looked after for a while. Sending your fork or shock into a dedicated suspension service centre for a full strip down and rebuild will transform how they feel on the trail and is significantly cheaper than splashing out on a new fork or shock. If you've done all of this and you still aren't happy, then don't worry. There are still ways you can extract more performance from your existing suspension units. A lot of forks can be upgraded with better quality dampers or air springs for a relatively minimal outlay. It's far cheaper than buying a whole new fork. If you have an entry level fork like a Fox Rhythm or RockShox Select, you can change out the entire damper to the range top in Grip 2 or charge a 3 damper, providing they fit your fork. This will pretty much give you the same levels of performance as their top of the line factory or ultimate forks for a fraction of the cost. For rear shocks, a lock can be custom tuned by a service centre for your ride up weight and riding style. This will unlock hidden performance and save you a fortune in the process. It's a hotly debated topic but there is a very strong argument that wheels can make one of the biggest changes to how your bike feels on the trail. A budget wheel set with a slow hub engagement, sloppy build and cheap rims can really stifle a bike's liveliness and enthusiasm. Swapping them out for a better set can make a whole world of difference. The downside is that like some other upgrades, there are few shortcuts you can take to save some cash. That means the easiest but most expensive way is to buy a whole new wheel set. Once you do though, your bike can feel transformed. Sticking on a lighter, faster engaging and solidly built wheel set will give your bike a whole new lease of life. It will pick up speed quicker, feel more reactive and can even improve suspension performance. This is due to the reduction in unsprung mass, meaning your suspension doesn't have to work as hard to get the wheels out of the way of obstacles. Stiffer wheels will feel better in the bends too, being more precise and giving you more control. You don't need to go out and spend four figures on a fancy carbon wheel set to get the benefits though. Many alloy wheel sets now get excellent hubs, wide rims and are incredibly well built. This means even a relatively budget set can still make a big difference. If you can't fork out for a new set of hoops though, there are some things you can do to improve the feel of your current set. Having your hubs serviced with fresh high quality bearings will make them spin smoother and roll faster, while some hubs like DT Swiss can have their internals upgraded to improve the speed of the engagement. Having the wheels trued by a professional wheel builder can make them feel tighter too, as well as ensuring they're perfectly round and rolling along nicely. Even so, that doesn't mean they're the single biggest upgrade you can make though. Time to reveal what we think is the most important upgrade that you can make to your bike. So finally, here we are. Our recommendation for the best upgrade that you can make to your mountain bike. As the one bit of your bike that's in contact with the ground, tyre choice makes a huge difference to how your bike performs on the trails. A quality set of tyres could offer improved grip for more control in the corners or depending on your tyre choice, less rolling resistance for increased speed. They can also offer better damping properties over a cheaper tyre. If your tyres have seen better days, then slapping on some fresh rubber can transform your riding. Even if your tyres aren't showing the thread of the carcass, a lot of new bikes come with hard compound cheaper rubber. Either way, splashing the cash on some top quality rubber circles is the best way to bring a performance improvement to your bike. 
when shopping around, look for ties with folding beads, multiple durometer rubber compounds and the latest tread patterns. Fresh rubber will give you more grip in the bends and in traction situations. Even if the corner knobs look okay on your current rubber, they can still be worn down. The knobs can tear and this leads to less support when lent over, which in turn knocks your confidence in the tyre's ability to perform. The edge box of the tyre will also round off over time, reducing the overall grip levels as the tyre won't dig into the ground as well as when new. Fresh boots will have nice sharp edges and plenty of rubber to support them on the carcass and will bring a huge confidence boost. Even replacing an almost brand new tyre made from a cheaper rubber compound can make a big difference. Replacing a single compound wire bead tyre with a folding bead tubeless compatible triple compound variant will transform your ride. The recommended retail price of top of the range rubber may make your eyes water, but few upgrades will have a more profound effect on how your bike rides. There's also a whole lot of tech to digest, so if you're still struggling to know your casing from your compound, then check out our MTB Tires Buyer Guide with the link in the description. So there are our top 5 upgrades that we think will transform your mountain bike. What have you upgraded on your bike and what do you think made the biggest difference to how it rode? Let us know in the comments and if you want to know more about mountain bike tyres then check out this video.